Yeah. We're bike. Talking about 10 players that y'all need to draft this year before they break out and their price. Boom. You'll be able to get them next year, next year, whenever Dynasty drafts, but at a stupid price. We're going to get them at a stupid price also, but on the flip side of things, all right? We buy the dip and we sell the skyrock. <laughs> Ten players starting at the QB position with Mr. Trevor Lawrence of the Jacksonville Jaguars. The deeper we've gotten to the offseason, the more comfortable I feel with this Jacksonville Jaguars team. They're run like a real franchise now, and I feel like we've got the stench of Urban Meyer on us still from last year. And it feels like it's like they got sprayed by a skunk. And and you almost feel like you, you hang out with them every day and you continue to smell it. And then eventually it weans off of them. That's what the Jacksonville Jaguars kind of feel like right now. And it feels like they they finally don't stink like ass anymore, okay? Trevor Lawrence has looked good. Trevor Lawrence has some legitimate weapons. I really like the chemistry he's shown with Christian Kirk, as well as Zay Jones. Marvin Jones is still there. Evan Ingram, hopefully he can do something there. Uh, Travis Etienne has been a baller out of the backfield. So I like the weapons they're slowly putting together. And just don't forget how good Trevor Lawrence was. And I know a lot of people miss on quarterback prospects, and we say this and this and this, and they, you know, they don't pan out. But Trevor Lawrence was put into arguably the worst situation you possibly could for an NFL quarterback. And he wasn't good last year. I'm not going to say like he did well for the situation he was in. He did it. All right. But everything about what we're hearing out of Jacksonville is that he's taking control. He's way more comfortable. He's a guy that you're getting at like QB 19, QB 20, QB 21 as your QB two in super flex leagues. So I'm not ready to say I want to start him in one quarterback leagues, but he's a dude who has the same fucking upside he had when he came into the league last year. And these guys typically take one year, two years to progress into that guy. When Trevor Lawrence take, makes that breakout jump, you're not going to be able to get him anymore, okay? So be a part of the breakout. He's also a rusher. Don't forget how good he was on the goal line last year. So listen, James Robinson might not be ready for the season. James Robinson might not be as effective. James Robinson might not be the goal line back. Maybe Trevor Lawrence plays a little bit more into that. He had a lot of rushing touchdowns coming out of college. I think he had, I think, 17 over the final two years of his career at Clemson. So don't be fucking fooled by the narrative around Trevor Lawrence and that he fell off and then he's not going to be a good player no more. He's still it. He's still that guy. And he will show us this year with a revamped coaching staff, with a revamped weapon regroup, with an improved offensive line, that he's still the dude that he came out as with all that hype, with all that sheesh last year. And this is just a reminder that our draft guy, I know your season long drafts are coming up this week or this weekend or whatever. The best way to prepare for that is honestly shut down this video, go over to prize picks, prizepicks.com, or use the link in the description to go to their app. And if you deposit $10 or more using promo code BDGE, they're going to hit you with a 100% deposit match on that to play on their platform. And we're going to be doing plays on there all season long, but you're getting our draft guide absolutely free. So you want our rankings? This is basically the only way to get them. If you're in a state that's not eligible for prize picks, then you can just go to BDGE.co. All right, BDGE.co, but prize picks is the cheapest and the easiest way to get it. You'll get an email with instructions and access to our draft guide. Prize picks, Trevor Lawrence, really good player. Let's move on to the second really good player. I know we got to tuck our shirts in though. Number two, and this is pretty fucking obvious based on his ADP, but it's Javante Williams, man. By the end of the year, we're going to be talking about Javante Williams as an obvious first round pick going into 2023. How is that going to happen? I don't know. Does he overtake Melvin Gordon? Does Melvin Gordon leave after this year? Everything we're hearing over the last couple of weeks is that it is a clear Javante job with Melvin Gordon trickling in here and there. This is going to be a very good offense. This is going to be an offense led by Russell Wilson coming over, a good offensive line, a lot of good weapons. This is a division that's going to score and score and score and score. The opportunities on the goal line, even if they are split, will still be plentiful. Javante is going to score a lot of touchdowns. He already bested Melvin Gordon in the receiving game last year as a rookie playing on split snaps. Zam. This year should be no different, but at a higher volume, in a better offense, with a better quarterback, with op more open lanes. We already know he's one of the best pure runners in the NFL. He, he proved it last year in basically every elusive metric, every metric that you could possibly find on the internet. Javante Williams is a dude that in the third round, you smash the draft button on because even if it takes him 10 weeks, one, you're getting probably top 15 production for 10 weeks if, if he's in a committee. He's going to be like the RB15 over the first 8, 10 weeks at worst. When he finally overtakes that job and he's getting 70% of the snaps there, he's a league winner down the stretch. So he's not one of those guys like a brief hall or whatever where you're like oh if he pops off down the stretch he'll win you your league but he's not really giving you anything up front Javante Williams is giving you a really safe floor for the first eight to ten weeks and then has that pop off league winning ability towards the end of the year so Javante Williams drafts him this year if he falls to you late second early third round 
anything earlier, though, probably off the board. But he's going to break out in a major way this year. So is A.J. Dillon. I think him and Aaron Jones somehow were the only two running backs left on the roster after cut day for Green Bay, which was insane. What we're going to see here is Aaron Jones playing a lot in the snap. What we're going to see here is both of those guys being the two best players on this offense on the field at the same time all the time. Okay. AJ Dillon already had more goal line carries than Aaron Jones did last year. I expect this to be a much more run heavy offense, given that they don't have Devonta Adams there. They don't have these weapons uh, that they've had in previous years. So they're going to have to rely on two of their best players, AJ Dillon, and Aaron Jones. So both of them will eat. AJ Dillon will be the main running back, getting more carries than Aaron Jones, getting more goal line carries than Aaron Jones. And he proved last year that he was a very good pass catcher. So AJ Dillon's a dude who's going to break out in a major way this year. Very good chance that they move on from Aaron Jones after next offseason as well. So his price is going to go all the way up. Damian Pierce's price is already all the way up. This preseason could no one was a bigger winner this preseason than Damian Pierce. He was an awesome prospect coming out of Florida, albeit a very small sample size. They did not let him get the rock as often as he deserved to get the rock. But throughout the preseason, he's done nothing but absolutely explode. They just cut Marlon Mack. So Damian Pierce is the clear early down guy. They're starting to give him preseason starter rest treat, whatever it is. He's the starting fucking running back in Houston. Obviously not a great situation, but he's got the upside of being the highest touch count rookie this year. Right. And I think there's a pretty good chance that that happens. All they have left on their roster right now running back is Rex Burkhead. I expect Rex Burkhead to play in the passing downs a lot. I expect him to play on third and long, but I expect Damian Pierce to get 16 to 18 carries per game and three to four targets per game. I think Damian Pierce is one of the easiest like breakout candidates in the world right now. If he drops you a lot of leagues, like if you're friends and family league or whatever, he's going to start dropping to the sixth, seventh, eighth, ninth, tenth round. He's just an auto pick every time there. Okay. Once he starts getting to like the fourth round, I start to get a little iffy, but he's going to break out this year. He is awesome. It's already been, it's already been foreseen. It, there's no fucking chance that this guy fails. Damian Pierce needs to be on your roster in fantasy. So does Ramondre Stevenson, who you get like six rounds later. They cut J.J. Taylor. Uh, they cut Kevin Harris, the six-round rookie. They don't have a lot of running backs on the roster. I don't know what Ty Montgomery's status is. He did get carted off the field in their last preseason game. I believe it's an ankle injury, but we don't have like the severity of it. I do think he'll probably miss some time, which means it's really going to be Damian Harris and Ramondre Stevenson, and we know which of those two is playing on passing downs, and it is not. Damian Harris. And Ramondre Stevenson was almost just as good as Damian Harris was on early downs. Stevenson's a dude that you could just get in the eighth, ninth, tenth round and has three down upside in an offense that's going to feed their running back. So we love Ramondre this year. If you miss out on the guys that we're talking about earlier in this video, we love Michael Pittman. He kind of broke out last year, but I, I expect him to like break out, break out this year. You know what I'm talking about? Like break out, break, like the second breakout is all capital letters after the first breakout is all low, like break out, break out, you know, like that Gen Z shit. So Pittman's going to be a 100 catch, 1400 yard receiver. Touchdowns, I don't know. Maybe he ends up with seven. Maybe he ends up with fucking 14. It depends on how this offense operates when they get into the red zone. I think it'll be more pass happy uh, with Matt Ryan there. Good offensive line. This is a clear target funnel to Michael Pittman, right? You look at what Matt Ryan's done with all of his wide receiver ones in the past, going back to fucking Roddy White, the GOAT, Julio Jones, Calvin Ridley, whatever. I feel like I've made this point 55 times this summer. Michael Pittman's going to go bonkers this year. So is Rashad Bateman with a 0% healthy running back group there in Baltimore. They're signing Kenyon Drake off the fucking streets. And Mike Davis is going to be like their workhorse for a couple of weeks. J.K. Dobbins not healthy. Very, very fucking obvious. Gus Edwards is not going to be healthy for a minute. This offense is going to have to go pass happy. They're going to have to. They don't really have a choice at this point. And last year, it was only Hollywood Brown, and it was Mark Andrews. Hollywood, not there anymore. He's in Arizona. It's going to be Rashad Bateman, then Andrews. The, the targets are just going to go like this. Every two seconds, it's going to be one of these guys. Bateman's going to, you know, he's just going to get forced into 130 to 140 targets this year. There's really no other option because this team is not going to be able to run the ball with the running backs that they have. They're going to have to go as pass heavy as they did last year, and they're all going to go to Bateman. All going to go to Bateman. He's an incredible route runner. I really, really love this kid. I love the outlook for him this year. And uh, yes, he is going to break out in a major way. So is Elijah Moore. Say what you want about the quarterback situation. He was better when Zach Wilson was off the field. Guys, were, like, don't be taking like three game fucking sample sizes and trying to extrapolate that into a player's whole fucking career. Like, relax. We want the best quarterback out on the field. Say what you want about Joe Flacco. He's 40 years old. I'd rather have Zach Wilson on the field. Regardless, it doesn't matter. Elijah Moore is good enough to be the guy that makes the quarterback. Garrett Wilson right now is fourth on the depth chart. We've looked at all the snaps in the preseason. It is Elijah Moore. It is Corey Davis. It is Braxton Barrios playing the slot. Garrett Wilson is the far and away fourth. Will that be how the season ends? No, but for eight to 10 weeks, Yes, that's how it is. It's Elijah Moore. It's Elijah Moore. It's Elijah Moore. He's one of the best separators in the league already. Inside, outside, can do 
everything. He's going to be the safety blanket for whoever is at quarterback. Elijah Moore is going to break out in a big way. You just want to bet on these young, young, young players. Second, second year running backs, second year wide receivers, like just bet on them when they have the opportunity. And all these guys have major opportunity. Same with Chris Olave. I love Chris Olave, New Orleans. Now with the hype of Michael Thomas coming back, Chris Olave has kind of moved down the draft boards. I'm seeing you know, Jarvis Landry hype, Marcus Callaway's even getting on the field. Olave is going to be the dude at the end of the year that breaks out. He's going to be the guy. I'm doing a video tomorrow that's, you know, players you're going to regret having drafted in drafts this uh, in this summer. And Michael Thomas, spoiler, is going to be on that list, which means I'm buying into Chris Olave. If I'm buying into Chris Olave, I kind of have to fade Michael Thomas. I am a buyer of Jameis Winston this year. He's a guy that I would be happy to have as my QB2 in super flex leagues. They're going to throw the ball a, a lot. They're going to sling it. Chris Olave is going to be the guy who ends up benefiting from that the most. He's a great deep target. He could run every single route. He could separate just like Elijah Moore, but I think he's a more refined, polished version of Elijah Moore. I can't wait to see what Olave does in New Orleans. And last up on this list, Irv Smith. We're bike on him. He was injured for a while, but now he's now he's good to go. He will be set for week one, but he's completely fallen off draft boards. Irv Smith is a very athletic tight end. We've been waiting for Kyle Rudolph to leave. Finally left, and now it is Irv Smith time. Yes, I know he left last year, but Irv Smith missed the entire year last year with an injury. Now he's bike. He'll be ready for week one. It is Jefferson, some some Thielen, and then Irv Smith. Those are like the three pass catchers here. KJ Osborne, cute. I don't know. I'd rather have Irv Smith at my tight end position than KJ Osborne as my wide receiver three. That's very obvious to me. Irv Smith is a dude who's super easy. He's got everything you're looking for at a breakout tight end. He's got like that hybrid size, which means he's going to be running a lot of routes over the middle and where tight ends get their fantasy production. He's very athletic, so you know he can do a lot of things when linebackers and safeties are covering him. They can't cover him in the red zone. Um, he is a problem in the red zone, and I am really excited to see Irv Smith break out this year. So he's a guy that if you miss on all your tight ends, you can go for Irv Smith. You can go for like David Njoku guys, but I wouldn't suggest doing that. But I do think Irv Smith has a really, really high likelihood of breaking out this year. So just to recap this list, 10 players to draft before they break out. If you want the full rankings, prizepicks.com. Promo code BDG when you deposit 10 bucks. We got T-Law. We got Javante Williams, A.J. Dillon, Damian Pierce, Ramondre Stevenson, Michael Pittman, Rashad Bateman, Elijah Moore, Chris Olave, and Irv the Swerve Smith. Yeah. All right. We're out of here. Make sure you subscribe to the channel if you're new. Hit the thumbs up button if you enjoyed. Watch any of our videos that we put out over the last couple weeks. It'll help prep for your draft this weekend. I love you. We out of here. Get wild.